This episode of Die Trying is brought to you by Peak Radiator Guarantee. Welcome to Die Trying. Vroom, vroom. I'm Patrick Norton. <laughs> I'm Michael Hand. And we are back again with Matt's Bombs Beater. Last week we changed the fluids. How about that? Any freezing coolant. That coolant was gross looking. It and was... we also did the oil. Mm -hmm. So this week we're doing a basic tune up. A basic tune up. Which is what is that? <laughs> okay, so back in the day, a tune would be like, well, I gotta change my spark plugs, and I gotta gap them, and I'm gonna actually make sure the points are clean, I'm gonna check the distributor and the rotor, and I'm probably gonna adjust the carburetor. So in the 21st century, a lot of that stuff doesn't happen anymore, but you should still do regular maintenance. So your vehicle, somewhere, either in the glove box, in the in the owner's manual, or maybe downloadable off the website, that, which is where That's we got- what the, we did. <laughs> yeah, so we downloaded this one off the website. So this is like, you know, this is, you know, 10- This th is the maintenance schedule, when you're supposed to check things based exactly. on the mileage pretty much. So 15,000 miles in 12 months. Replace engine oil, oil filter, rotate tires, inspect the following. Seems useful. It is incredibly <laughs> useful. Uh, it helps a lot if you have one of these though. Ooh. Yeah, the repair manual for my truck. I actually have the manufacturer's manual for my big diesel truck, which is like nine inches thick. Um, the repair manual, this is a Chilton manual. It's available behind the counter or in front of the counter at almost every auto parts store on the planet. Um, that basically tells you all of the stuff you need to know for working on your vehicle. How to fix it and the correct way to do it. Yes. <laughs> so with this repair manual, that maintenance schedule, and this little OBD2 adapter, <laughs> we're gonna get tuning. Yes. Wow. So we pop the hood, now what? Just nose around and take a look and make sure things kind of look ship shape. This looks fine though. It's dirty under here and we'll kind of scrape it and clean it up as we go. So the first thing we did was pull a spark plug boot. One thing you never want to do is lift up by the spark plug cable. That's why they have this little handle here on these. There we go. And get out our spark plug wrench. And here we are removing a spark plug. And when we took a look at the first spark plug we pulled out, it was nasty. So the color on this plug is good. It's a nice light brown, but the electrodes definitely chewed away. This has had a lot of miles put on it and probably hard miles. Um, reading spark plugs is something you can learn a lot about on the interweb, so we're not gonna go too far into it right now. But let's go grab our plugs and gap them and get ready to put them in. Michael, come over here and take a look at these. These are the old spark plugs. These were so obviously worn out. This gap in here is supposed to be .032. Use a feeler gauge, not one of these round gauges. These are cheap, but they're not spectacularly accurate. So normally we would have a gap of like 0.032 in here. That's the ideal, that's what you're supposed to set it to. This one's upwards of 0.55. Yeah, a bit of a difference in that gap. This is a new modern spark plug. We set the gap to 0.032 and we're gonna check the rest of our spark plugs. So when we were putting back in the new spark plug, we put on some anti-seize grease on there. What it does is prevent parts from sticking together. And this thing here, is a crush washer. So we're gonna snug this down hand tight and do it another half turn according to the instructions on the box. That's a way to get your spark plugs properly put in uh, without having to use a torque wrench to set them. If you wanna get really belt and suspenders or if the manual tells you to, you can put dielectric connector grease. It will help your spark plug boots come off easier. You wanna put it on the edge here. So removing the distributor cap. So first we have to take off the air filter, which we'll get back to that later. So removing the distributor cap gives us two things. One, we can inspect it, but also we can check the resistance on the spark plug wires. We were kind of happy to find out they were all well within spec. I think it was like 25,000 ohms or higher. They were no good. These were all well under 25,000 ohms. The distributor cap was looking pretty crufty and it looked like there had been some pretty nasty arcing on the rotor itself, which indicates it's time to replace both of them. So popped in a new rotor, put on the new cap, made sure that our wires were all consistent with what they were before. Yes. We even took pictures with my phone. Once the distributor cap was bolted back on, we put in a new filter because, hey, it was already open. Pop the air filter cover back on, make sure you put the tabs down, and hey, while we're under here, let's take a look at our functional fluids. This is the brake fluid. Make sure the level is between the min and max, and over here is the power steering reservoir. On the stuff like the power steering reservoir and your oil, there's usually a hot and a cool level. Don't confuse the two. And then we topped off the coolant, and hey, 
Peak's our sponsor. How convenient that we're using their coolant. Yeah, and you know what? Peak also has a lot of functional fluids like brake fluid, power steering fluid, gear oils, grease, tranny fluid. They got you covered. They also have a really amazing guarantee. Peakguarantee.com even has a pretty slick maintenance tracker. You can enter in your vehicles and keep track of your fluids that way. If you use their long life antifreeze, you get a five year, 150,000 mile guarantee. If you use their global lifetime, you get a life that will, for the lifetime, your car guarantee on your peak antifreeze and coolant. How cool is that? Peak's radiator guarantee, protect your cooling system guaranteed. All right, here's the part that I'm most excited about, the OBD2 adapter. Onboard diagnostics. Since 1996, every vehicle has somewhere within three feet of the steering wheel, give or take, this weird little, well, plug, and you plug in an OBD2 meter into it. In the Back in the day, they'd be like thousands of dollars, and you'd probably be a dealership to have one. Now, 11, 15 bucks off of Amazon.com which is exactly what I got, and it's Bluetooth compatible, hooks up to your Android phone, and then we use the app Torque to kind of read the interface. In our case, we were checking the idle to make sure the idle was properly set, and then of course, because we are who we are, we started flipping through all of the gauges and looking at all the different things we can monitor. It's like, oh, there's the O2 sensors, and oh, the intake manifold pressure, and oh, uh, we should move on. And oh, we can see every single output from the computer. <laughs> yes, as long as we like are willing to scroll through them on the screen. But it's really awesome because you can use this like $15 Elm327 adapter connected to your tablet or your Android phone and essentially have a full custom set of gauges for your car. And make it into a heads-up display if you want. I like it. That wasn't too bad. No, it was actually, yeah, and it was much less sticky than replacing <laughs> the scary coolant that was yeah. in this thing. Hey, one of the reasons why we remind you to get a, a repair manual for your vehicle is because of tune-up process in every vehicle, or even the same vehicle across, you know, a 10-year span, it changes, right? Mm. Uh, my wife's Volvo, if we were tuning up her Volvo, we would have to check the timing, and if the timing was off, we'd have to unbolt, you know, a bolt at the bottom of the distributor and rotate to the distributor until the timing was correctly set. Let's not do that. Well, and that's one of the nice things. The newer a car is, the lesser is for you to do. Most really new cars don't actually have a distributor anymore because they have coils that are triggered by the engine control. Um, <laughs> the computer. So, it's something to be said for new technology. Thank you, technology. But once we did all of those things that we did, mm -hmm. then everything works way better. It, it runs much smoother. Yeah, it's it's not as rough as idle. It takes off the line a little bit faster. I suspect if somebody had been keeping track of the mileage, the mileage should go up. So, you're welcome, Matt's mom. And welcome to the brand new car. Well, <laughs> that might be stretching it a little bit. <laughs> In any case, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, youtube.com slash dietrian or dietrian.com. At dietrian, dietrian at revision3.com. We're everywhere. <laughs> I'm Patty Norton. I'm Michael Hand. We'll see you next week.